name is Yolanda Mayo. Welcome to today's ceremony marking the completion of phase one of the Museum of the Marines. On behalf of the Board of Directors of the Museum of the Marines, welcome to today's ceremony where the Board of Directors will proudly present this reflection and celebration park to the Commanding General Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune and to the Jacksonville Onslow County community. We are so pleased that all of you have joined us today. For those of you who are seated, we request you to remain so throughout the ceremony, except for those occasions when I will invite you to stand. Finally, please join me in extending a wonderful welcome to Jolie Brooks and the quartet from Jacksonville High School. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem, which will be sung by Gunnery Sergeant Christopher Taylor. Today's invocation is by Chaplain Lee. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave and now may i have a round of applause for gunnery sergeant taylor It's my pleasure now to introduce to you Mr. John B. Salas, the Chairman of the Board of Directors for the Museum of the Marines. Thank you. Thank you and welcome. On behalf of the Board of Directors of the Museum of the Marine, past, present, and future, it is my privilege and pleasure to welcome you to today's park presentation ceremony. We thank you for being here. We especially thank Mother Nature for cooperating. We are gathered here today to celebrate the completion of phase one of the Museum of the Marine. Last Friday morning, one week ago, many of us gathered at the steps of the base headquarters to help celebrate with General Widely and his staff the 75th anniversary of the establishment of Marine Barracks New River, the precursor to our two extraordinary Marine Corps installations here in Onslow County. In view of that birthday, it's entirely fitting that today we present this gift, this park, this place of rem remembrance and celebration to our proud and distinguished and world-renowned Marine Corps base and its host community. So happy birthday, Camp Lejeune, and please accept this contribution, this first installment on our gift to the Lejeune Memorial Gardens with our very best wishes. And please understand that before another 75 years have transpired, we fully intend to make good on our promise to deliver to this community a world-class destination, the Museum of the Marines. As we renew that pledge today, we are under no illusion as to the magnitude of the challenge ahead, but drawing on the determination and dedication and perseverance and resolve of those who arrived here in May 1941 to establish a major amphibious training base, we remain certain that one day we, or those who may follow in our footsteps, will return to this site to celebrate the fulfillment of what has sometimes been the impossible dream. We have many people to thank for the completion of this first phase of our museum project. 
but just as the credits, the names of all the technical specialists and invaluable contributors to a major motion picture roll on and on and on for several minutes, it would take us several hours if we were to name everybody responsible. So to all of you, you know who you are. Uh, to those who have contributed moral support, financial support, in-kind support, to those of you who have purchased commemorative bricks, have participated in golf tournaments, poker runs, and other fundraisers, and to those of you who have contributed the priceless gifts of your time and talent, we sincerely thank you for having made this occasion possible. And to the inevitable skeptics and our occasional detractors, you know who you are. We thank you for the inspiration you have given us to press right ahead in spite of you. Thank you very much for that. So while time does not permit me to properly acknowledge everyone responsible for the completion of phase one, there are some people here and elsewhere whose contributions have been absolutely indispensable. We, we are sincerely indebted to the leadership past and present of Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune and the various higher headquarters up the chain, uh, Marine Corps Installations East, Marine Corps Installations Command, the Atlantic Division of the Naval Facilities Engineering Command, all the way up to and including the Secretary of the Navy himself. We are especially grateful to our elected officials, to the City Council of Jacksonville, to our Onslow County Commissioners, to our Tourism Development Authority, to our local representatives, every one of them past and present, in the North Carolina General Assembly. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We would not be here today without your continued support. We thank the Greensboro architectural firm, Callaway Johnson, Moore and West. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the architect's plans. We've had them for a number of years now, and they are already winning awards. So we thank you, CJMW, for standing by us. If you will hang in there as we endeavor to bring this award-winning baby into the world, thanks to you when the time comes, she's ready to graduate Phi Beta Kappa. <laughs> to our friends for life at Pro Construction, and to all their subcontractors. We can't thank you enough for having transformed this once impenetrable jungle and great dismal swamp into a beautifully finished park. To Nick Lanier, Bobby Walton, and your many skilled associates, we hope you are every bit as proud of this product as we are. We thank Marine Federal Credit Union for funding the magnificent Eagle Globe and Anchor we're about to unveil. Thank you, Marine Fed, for this most generous gift to our community. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, we owe an everlasting debt to a remarkably gifted artist, Mr. David Turner from Virginia's Eastern Shore. David is the sculptor of this bronze masterpiece. We thank you, David, for your creative brilliance and exhaustive efforts to include last week's personal delivery and installation of this larger-than-life emblem. When we broke ground on this project last year on 22 May, we promised we'd be back. Here we are. It was my privilege then, as it is today, to welcome home the founding father of this Herculean labor of love, who has so graciously bequeathed to us the completion of his dream. The man who first conceived of this museum and who inspired his original board of directors to cross the line of departure with him in 1999. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming back to Camp Lejeune one of our Corps' truly legendary warriors, a giant in the annals of the Carolina Marines, Major General Ray Smith. Thank you, thank you, please. I did bequeath uh, to those who followed me the task of uh, following and completing what was 
largely maybe my beginning dream, but a lot of people have uh, shared that dream and many have been named here today. Uh, life goes on and I've moved on, unfortunately, but I can assure you that uh, I remain as committed as ever to this cause and will continue to do anything and everything I can do to make it happen. But I'm here today to introduce our guest speaker. And you know, our original vision and continued vision for this, this museum was to represent the museum, the Marines of the Carolinas and the history of both the Marines that went forth from the Carolinas over the years and the, the communities in the Carolinas that have supported those Marines. And that remains the vision of this museum. And when you talk about the Marines of the Carolinas, the Carolina MAGTAF, you cannot, you cannot not think of our guest of honor today. The man who, in my mind, and I think in most all of our minds, most completely represents the Carolina MAGTAF. In fact, he might have originally coined the term the Carolina MAGTAF. If he didn't, I'm going to say he did. <laughs> I think he did. So the, the Carolina MAGTAF uh, is, ha, will always be, I think, uh, epitomized in our guest of honor today. And he, of course, needs no introduction in Eastern Carolina and, and can't really be introduced. When he first became our 29th Commandant, there were a number of, uh, I, I can't be as eloquent as Jay just was, but distractors and uh, commenters. And one of the things that was often said was that General Gray had these pet rocks that he kind of drug around with him everywhere he went. And I want to say, I can't completely claim that I was one of his boys, but if I was, it was perhaps my greatest honor as a Marine to be considered one of Gray's guys. It, it still is to this day, Joe. So with no further ado, I'd like to introduce our 29th Commandant, General Al Gray. Thank you very much, and thanks, Ray, for that the great introduction. But more importantly, thank you for, the, for giving me the opportunity, really, to come back home. Uh, I'm back home here now, a place that is very, very close to my heart and to my wife Jan's heart. And it's great to see so many of you, and it's just great to be with you. And it's particularly a privilege to participate in this dream reality. The idea of having a museum for the Marines and talking about the Carolina Marine Air Ground Task Force, which is really a Marine Air Ground Logistics Team under a single commander. The idea of uh, that is just, I think, phenomenal. And it's one that I believe will, uh, will go down in our history as something that you're all going to be very, very proud of and very proud to have been a part of it. The Carolina MAGTAF idea really has its genesis in, in February of 1954 when uh, the then Commandant General Shepard made the statement that we really need to think about being a Marine Air Ground Task Force. We really have to be a MAGTAF, if you will. We have long been the experts in close air support and in supporting uh, ground troops and all that. That was, that was our heritage. That's what we did. But he said, we've got to put it together now, particularly with the Marine Air Groups and the ground troops and, of course, the logistics people that make it all happen under, again, a single commander. And so they had, they, they came up with something called the second uh, MAGTAF. And it was uh, located here at Camp Lejeune. And it uh, had its first exercise in, in uh, April of 1954 and the like, where they began to, in concert with the Navy, think through these concepts and think through these ideas, which eventually became doctrine. And there's a long history of the Carolina MAGTAF, really both South Carolina, North Carolina, and what these people have done. We all are pretty familiar with their contribution to World War II and all that meant. And uh, 
if I may, I will confine my comments to 1950 and, and today, because that's what I really know a little bit more about, and it would be more appropriate. But you have to, you have to understand the long uh, tradition and the long trial of trying to make these kind of things happen. You have people at Quantico who do the studies and all that kind of thing, but really it takes warriors in the field. It takes Marines and sailors in the field and aboard ship to make it happen. When they, when they refined the helicopter doctrine, actually it started in 1948 and of course came to fruition uh, quite a bit in, in Korea and the like, but the real idea of landing on, from ships to go ashore and land by helicopter, that really, that idea really came on a little bit later. And the very first helicopter landing from ship to shore carrying troops happened here at Onslow Beach under then Colonel Keith McCutcheon, who later became a general head of aviation. So these are some of the historical kinds of things that we can go back to and, and we can bring up, if you will, in terms of the museum and the thinking, the, thinking, the concepts and the like. We, uh, as you know, we developed the Harrier aircraft. Uh, along the way in the late 50s and 60s and people like General Miller, the old aviation commander and the like, flew the first Harriers in England and so on. But the very first testing of the Harrier concept in 1972 where, where company commanders and battalion commanders would go up, go up to pilots in the field and tell them what they needed and the pilots would take off and run the mission. The very first concepts were tested in the spring of 1972 right here at Camp Lejeune. So that's just one more historical kind of thing that happened. Also in 1972, the, the very first large brigade exercise was held at 29 Palms. And that was consisted of primarily forces from Camp Lejeune, Cherry Point, New River, and Beaufort, South Carolina, as well as forces from the West Coast. It was the first time that the Marine Corps had put Marines from the the Pacific Command, if you will, and the Marines from the Atlantic Command together at 29 Palms. They ran the first big brigade-sized mechanized exercise. Marines from the 2nd Marine Division using the old Amtraks, the LVT-5s. You remember those? They're almost as old as you, right? They were so old that the, when you ran them for about 20 miles or so, they would, it was so hot you could fry an egg on the hood of the, of the Amtrak, of the amphibious vehicle. But this first, this exercise, they took these, they took these LVT-5s with Marine warriors 60 miles the first day in the desert. It was the first large mechanized kind of a thing that we had ever done, really. And it's paved the way, it set the scene for, for later operations in NATO and the like where we had to conduct these kinds of operations. In 1976, the Commandant, then General Wilson, the Medal of Honor winner from Guam, General Wilson was adamant that we had to demonstrate to the world that we were in fact a good capable force that could really reinforce NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Alliance in Europe. We had been criticized before and we had not done very well over there. And, and they really, we were the, you know, technically we were the strategic reserve for NATO in those days along with the 82nd Airborne. But really, People didn't know much about what the MAGTAF really could do, what our Air Ground Task Force really uh, was capable of doing. And so he, he formed a, a, the first permanent Marine Brigade since World War I, the 4th Marine Amphibious Brigade, and he formed that force and he gave them the mission of, of really making sure that Europe and everybody else, our allies, knew just how good we could be and what we could do and how we would use our air and show the Air Force and everybody else how we employ our air under a single commander. And what did he do? He chose... He chose forces from Camp Lejeune and Cherry Point and Beaufort, the Carolina MAGTAP, to make this happen. And they did in 1976, in 1977, in 1978, and on through the rest of the 70s and 80s. He made, he made the Marine Corps totally, totally 
uh, uh, valuable, if you will, to the, our European allies and the like. So this is yet another contribution. If you fast forward later, in the, in the early 80s, in the time frame that General Smith talked about, after thinking about these things with the 4th Mav and the like, but it was really here at Camp Lejeune where the whole maneuver warfare thought process took place. And it was the young sailors and Marines and officers and the like of the Carolina MAGTAF that made it happen. They conducted for two or for several years free type of exercises and the like. And the idea was not to have, not to have approval of higher headquarters. The idea was to, to make it happen on the ground here. Because if you get higher headquarters involved, it's liable to be disapproved, you know. I mean, higher headquarters is your natural enemy. Uh, never, you younger Marines out here in the audience still on actively remember this, never, never provide any gratuities to higher headquarters. Simply answer the question as quickly as you can. That was always my, my theme, and it was very successful. Uh, except when I became higher headquarters, then I quit, <laughs> I quit saying that, but that's another, that's another topic. But the point I want to make is that we sold this idea in the field. First, in the Carolina MAGTAF, and then later throughout the Corps. And I'll tell you how it worked. For example, one day, we did a lot of our exercise at Fort P Pickett. And one day we were having a free, they were all free maneuvers. You had to get your own intelligence, how to do your own thing, you had to have your own critiques and the like. And uh, we were at Fort Pickett and we were teaching how to break out of an encirclement. And the way you do that, of course, is you, you have the force that's inside and being encircled. They put reconnaissance units out in a 360 degree circle, if you will, and they look for openings in the light. In this particular scenario, uh, and you will, uh, I think recall this, General Smith, but this particular scenario, uh, the 8th Marines uh, were encircled, the 8th Marine Regiment. They had a battalion, they had their headquarters, they had some tanks and other forces, and they were surrounded by another tank battalion, a couple of more battalions and other forces than the like. The, uh, the S3 of the regiment was a young, tough major who really didn't believe much in this maneuver idea. And, uh, but he, uh, he was a good officer. He had been, uh, he'd won the Navy Cross in, uh, in uh, Vietnam and the like. He was a good tactician uh, and all. Uh, you know him, Ray. And uh, anyway, he was the three. And out in this, uh, in the, uh, these reconnaissance units were out in the perimeter. And one of the recon teams said, we're here by checkpoint 16 and there's nobody here. So Major Smith picked up the radio, said the focus of main effort is now through checkpoint 16, go. And the whole force escaped the encirclement. That's the day that Major Smith became a real believer in the management of the world. So that's what we were doing. <laughs> little by little, we were getting these key people of all ranks and grades, whether they were corporals or generals or whatever, and they were beginning to understand that this really, really works. And you know, Ray later, when uh, after the Beirut uh, attack and the like, but later when Ray went uh, uh, to Beirut to relieve that force, uh, he had to go to Grenada, and it was his battalion that took uh, eight of the ten objectives on the island of Grenada on the way to Beirut. And I still have the three by five card, Ray, that you sent me from, uh, that, uh, from that deployment. And it says, man, this stuff really works, Ray Smith. <laughs> And I still have it, I keep it on my desk. And whenever I have non-believers and doubters, I break it out, brag about you a little bit. So these are the kind of things that went on in the Carolina MAGTAF. And I could go on and on and on about the different lessons and the like. If you fast forward to after I retired, I had nothing to do with it, but the magnificent performance of our warriors in Iraq and Afghanistan, the Horn of Africa, and all throughout the globe, the things that we have done, that's a tribute to the Carolina Marine Air Ground Task Force as well. The idea of the Marine Corps uh, initially developing special operation capable forces, that was all done here in the Carolinas. That was, that was an idea, it was conceived, it was developed, it was implemented and executed. And out of that and other capabilities, now of course we have the Marine Special Operations Command and the like, and we're all very proud of what they do. So that's a, just another example, embryonic, if you will, of, of what has happened here and what you've meant, not just to the Marine Corps, not just to the Navy, but to our nation. It's the ultimate 
it's the ultimate idea. It's the, it's the ultimate contribution to you can make that you can make to our nation. That's what makes the Marine Corps special. And that's what makes the Carolina Marines special. And that's what uh, you have, that's what you've done, and that's what your tradition is. And, and above all, if you want to carry that idea forward, there's no better way I can think of than having this beautiful museum idea and bring it to fruition. So Ray, if there's anything that we could do on the side to help this thing along, you, uh, you let me know, okay? And with that, uh, it's enough yakking. We've got to get out there and see if we can unveil that thing without getting wet. Uh, I've been promised that we're all going to have a hold of a piece of rope and we be yank on it, but I have a, I'm a little bit wary because I'm kind of old to be splashing around at, at this, late, this late date. But at any rate, to thank you all for being with us, and as always, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. God bless you and Shepard Fidelis. I'd like to give all of our cameramen time to get in, in position. And on my count, on my count, Sergeant Major, on my count. <laughs> One, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would please stand for the playing of Anchors Away and the Marines Hymn by the Jacksonville High School Cardinal Quartet. Thank you once again to the Jacksonville High School Quartet. Thank you also to Chaplain Lee and Gunnery Sergeant Taylor, and thank you all for joining us today. We do have light refreshments right down here, and please take pictures. This concludes our ceremony.